Welcome to the On Deck Podcast for all your baseball DFS needs with your superstar hosts, fantasy baseball experts, Casey Bubba and Bogman. On Deck Podcast is sponsored by Line Star App, the number one top rated data and analytics tool for daily fantasy sports. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the On Deck MLB DFS podcast brought to you by the wonderful people at Line Star Sports. Check them out on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star MLB. And make sure you download the app in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Everything you need to build your winning lineups in the palm of your hand, optimizers, value tools, the chat room, much, much more. So go check it all out. Line Star in your app store. Make that happen. You can find myself on Twitter at BD and check my coast as always on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Scott Bogman, how are we doing, my friend? I'm doing great. It seems like the games that have taken place tonight are moving in slow motion. Yeah. Like everything seems slowed down. We're still, we're not even at the end of this Cubs Phillies game as we're recording this. And this is, uh, this is when we record every night. I mean, it's, yep. it's not a, a shocking turn of events, but Philly put up 10 runs. Brandon Woodruff wasn't great. No, he was uh, great until the seventh inning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get to watch yeah. that one. So, uh, got beat up a little bit there. Uh, but there were some, uh, you know, a lot of runs put up by the tribe, uh, a lot of runs put up by the Phillies today. The Reds got in there too. Good the thing it wasn't, yeah, Pirates. Yeah, your uh, stack and you had a couple really good calls. I mean, Jake Marisnik went yard. You, you called him out specifically against the lefty. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was a decent day, but a weird one for sure. Yeah, I know if you multi-entered a contest, and uh, if you've asked me before in the chat, which I've said once in a while, I, I have like my five or six stacks I like, so I'll mix and match them in chats. I liked White Sox and Cleveland, so you should have some White Sox Cleveland that should have helped you a little bit. Not sure if it would have got you all the money, is because I think you needed Pittsburgh or at least Ben Gamble, who somehow hit two home <laughs> runs and like had an RBI double and didn't get played by many people at all. So that's baseball in a nutshell. And Joe Musgrove was a chalky pitcher, and it's already five nothing early in that one, so he's getting <laughs> beat up. You gotta love baseball; you just gotta love it. It's good stuff. So it's but, uh, it's very different. Your boy Kevin Gossman even lost tonight. Yeah, he gave it two runs in seven innings. He actually pitched well with the Giants. The bats are cold, like the last week; they're getting cold, mm. and it's like it's starting to happen. I mean, I, I thought it would happen like two months ago. They at least waited till July. Like they gave me three months of fun. So yeah, what are the Dodgers at like nine wins in a row or something yeah, stupid? They, they both lost today, so we're still a half game up. But and the Padres are losing. Thank God. So we might keep the lead going into Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm just waiting for that other shoe to drop and then like be down by ten games by August or something. It's it's coming. <laughs> so fun stuff there. But enough enough of the depression. Pretty soon, you know, we won't talk Diamondbacks or Giants on this show. But, <laughs> well, we uh, already don't talk Diamondbacks, so that's fine. <laughs> I, I give. I tap. You, I'm out. You tapped out on that one. But uh, tonight, Tuesday night, we have 14 games. Monster slate. Monster slate with some monster pitchers. Uh, a couple weather issues like the Mets. I think it'll be fine with like 20 to 25 percent chances. So if they want to be dumb dumbs and not risk the Grom out there, they might pull some fast ones. So just keep an eye on that one. And then um, your other ones in Minnesota. Minnesota and the White Sox. About 40 percent chances of rain there. But I think. We will be okay. I hope fifty we'll percent okay. for both of them. I mean, that's yep. a pretty clear day. So, yep, that's the way I see it. And it's, it's gonna be warm with some windy situations. So, have some fun with some more offense all over the diamond. And we'll kick things off with Mister Degrom himself, the Milwaukee Brewers at the New York Mets. Brett Anderson versus Jacob Degrom over under six and a half. Because I guess Brett Anderson's given up six, maybe. So that that's pretty cool <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, Brett Anderson's cheap. Degrom's eleven five on DK, eleven eight on Fanduel. You just got to keep paying for Degrom. It feels like Bogman. Yeah, I mean he's always the best option. Really doesn't matter what his price is. You know, I don't know what the highest price of a pitcher ever on DK has been, but uh, he's just always the best option. Eleven five, eleven eight. You know, he he's in play. Doesn't matter what time, even with weird potential rain delays and stuff like that. Uh, but I mean, I think I would only be taking Mets bats in this game. I Yelich hits. DeGrom. He doesn't hit anything this year, but he hits DeGrom 15 for 34 with two doubles against him. That's a 441 average in over, you know, 34 at bats here. That's pretty good. Uh, Pilar uh, has a decent record against Anderson. So does Peraza if he's in there. Uh, some of these uh, Brewers bats have been hitting, but obviously you can't get excited about him with DeGrom on the mound. So for me, it's like Pilar, 
Pete Alonzo, Dom Smith is 36 and 32. That's not a bad price for him. Uh, Brandon Nimmo has been hitting since he came back, 4,700. I think those are the guys I want. Yeah, I'll throw another one in there. James, uh, James McCann hits lefties quite well. But all in all, I just want Jacob DeGrom in this game. Uh, with, with 14 other games, I want to say there's going to be a much better offense elsewhere. You did mention some Brewers, though. Like, if it was a smaller slate, I'd use my normal. Like, if you want to get contrarian versus the top pitcher, here it is. Not so much on a 14 game slate because you can get contrarian with better situations type thing. And the ground doesn't get shelled. So, if you are going to use any Brewers, use like no more than two. Like, make it a one off situation. Bomb. Yeah. Oh, my guy just hit a home run as we record. Live on the show. Congrats. Right here. If you watch YouTube, I'm I'm making it rain. So there you go. (laughs) Check out the Line Star YouTube channel. It's happening. Bogman and I were laughing, going, How did the Cubs not hit any home runs besides Marisnik in this game? I'm like, It's okay. All three picks are coming up to lead off our bottom of the ninth. It's going to happen. We got one. So that's good. But uh, back to the slate. DeGrom. Atlanta at the Pittsburgh. Pirates in this one where Atlanta continues to be one of the more disappointing DFS offenses on the face of the planet. And the Pirates just, there's a reason why I always say their value because they do stuff like they do like twice a week, what they did on Monday night. So you get Ian Anderson, Chad Cool, over under eight and a half on this one. Anderson's 86 and 84, Cool 69 and 7,000. Any interest in either arm on this one? I mean, I don't have any interest in Cool Chad, but uh, Ian Anderson might be okay. I know the Pirates have been hitting a little bit too. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but the price isn't bad at 86, 84 and his last start against Pittsburgh. I mean, it was back on May 15th, but uh, six innings pitched, no earned runs, no walks, six strikeouts. So pretty good track record here. Uh, Orlando Arcia gets cool a little bit five for 14 with a double. And uh, there's uh, Ben Gamble's hot, but not a lot of pirates that are hot outside of him. Uh, even though they have, they've been putting up some runs, but no one is really running hot. So uh, Albies, Freeman, Guillermo Heredia, those those are guys I'm interested in. Yeah, if you want to go back to Atlanta, I don't blame you. Uh, Cool's like been getting hit, but not hit a lot, if that makes sense. So it's been tough to, on a big slate, you need the hammers tonight. So uh, the Braves could do it. No one will be shocked, but it's also frustrating because they should be doing it like every other night, it feels like, and they don't. So if you want to go to the Braves, you can. If you are stacking Pittsburgh, it's going to be Reynolds, Frazier, Brian Hayes, Ben Gamble, the usual suspects. I can't wait to see what Ben Gamble's price is. And Polanco. He's been, <laughs> he's been good also. But Ben Gamble at 2000 and 2200 bucks after a night like on Monday. I hate to break it. shoot up, I'm, right? I'm not playing a chalky Ben Gamble. So have fun with that <laughs> one yourselves. Uh, Toronto at Baltimore on this one. See, now we're talking about better hitting environments, folks. This is where the fun begins. We got Steven Matz checking in on this one. 78 on DK, 8,000 on fi- FanDuel. I believe he is facing Dean Kramer as well. This is a great hitter's ballpark with two hitter pitchers that love to give it up, Bogman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, stack either side of this one, right? I mean, Toronto obviously is chalky. Simeon, Bichette, Springer, Griel, Vlad, anybody, you know. Uh, But on the uh, Baltimore side, uh, Franco's, I know he's a little banged up. I know he's day-to-day, but if he's in there, uh, he's 7 for 13 with two homers against Mats, so a little nice PVB data, 35 and 2,600. Uh, Cedric Mullins, obviously, uh, just still not even priced right, 39 and 3,400. Austin Hayes has been hitting a little bit, Ramon Urias, so uh, those are the bats that I like here. Yeah, I like the Ramon Urias value because, of course, kind of like a Baltimore Orioles stack in this one. <laughs> so uh, you start with Cedric Mullins. You got Mancini if you want, but Mountcastle has been crushing it. He's not too expensive. I love the Ramon Urias value as well. And then you see what the lineup dictates because they've been spitting out some different combinations. Maybe you get a you know, a Severino behind the dish or some other little cheapies you can take advantage of and uh, and go from there. And the one thing I will mention, Toronto, it's usual suspects. Like you said, Lourdes Gurriel seems like he might be heating up. So enjoy him while he's cheap at the bottom part of that lineup to be a little different because Toronto should be very popular on Tuesday night. Los Angeles Dodgers at the Miami Marlins. Tony Gonsolin, Pablo Lopez over under seven and a half. Gonsolin 76 and 63, Lopez 77 and 95. I just can't use Gonsolin because they don't let him go long, Boggs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's really it on Tony. Uh, as soon as uh, he gets stretched out and, you know, they're going to be missing a spot in the rotation, it seems like for a little bit. So yeah. uh, he should get stretched out. Uh, I'll be more interested. Hey, look, Lopez should be well rested, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, he know. should be. Should be coming off a couple days rest. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's a, kind of a tougher draw against LA, especially with them hitting. You know, up until today, it had been nine in a row for them. They had won, but um, it, I, I Lopez is an option for sure. I mean, he's cheaper than Ian Anderson 
on DK, 7,700, 9,500 on FanDuel. So uh, he's a decent option there. I don't know if I would go diving after him against the Dodgers, but he's at least in play. But for me, it's just the hot batters here on the, you know, the LA side, Muncie, Turner, Taylor, Lux, Will Smith. On the Miami side, Duvall can always go deep, 37, 3,400. Garrett Cooper, Jesus Aguilar starting to hit again. And Sawyer Marte is hitting, uh, you know, always good to be hitting in the middle of contract negotiations for Star yeah. So we like that. Yeah, three years, $30 million, what they offered him. Oh, okay, no, that's not going <laughs> to happen. Like, geez, Louise, Marlins, look, we know you're cheap, but come on, don't, don't, uh, you know, offend the man. But Marte is always uh, an interesting play. He's been kind of cold of late, but he's still in play. But Cooper, Chisholm, I like, can get some cheap Marlins if you want to, because Gonson, even though he doesn't go long, he's still not doing well when he's in there to begin with. So he walks a lot of guys, and you can take advantage of that. If you want to go with some Marlins, I don't hate it. Like, I'd like to go with some Orioles probably for now. There's some other teams for like the contrarian side of things that the Marlins would become lower owned in this matchup against the Dodgers. Detroit at Texas, Jose Urania versus Dane Dunning over under of nine Urania. They got Dunning at 74 and 75. You can always make a case for Dunning Bogman, but in all in all, I think it's a, uh, it's bat central time. Yeah. I mean, look, Dane Dunning hasn't gone six since May 20th. So I'm not really dependent on him here. Um, uh, David Dahl has a good track record against Urania four for six with a double. I mean, who doesn't have a good track record against yep. Urania, right? But I mean, there's hot bats on both sides. Uh, Eric Haas has been white hot for uh, Detroit scope. Akil Badu is back on his heater, like we said yesterday. Miguel Cabrera has been hitting, and he's cheap, 31, 3,000. Candelario back up off the aisle and hitting 36, 26. Gallo, of course, has been hot. Hicks, White, Low, even Culberson, if he's in there, have been hot bats. So I, I, I'm good with a nice, you know, if you wanted to stack either side of this game. Yeah, this could be one of those sneakier game stack situations. The way I liked Cleveland on uh, Monday night, I like Detroit quite a bit on this one because people will use the Texas side against Urania, which is very good. But I think you could attack with Detroit and be a little more contrarian there. But uh, when he's hitting well, I call him by his surname, and that is Sir Joseph Gallo. And um, <laughs> he, he went deep again on Monday. The dude is just ridiculous right now, so just keep playing him while you can. At a reasonable price, he's very good. But I like Detroit quite a bit with Badu and, and company leading the way. Both sides are very affordable, and this will like help you save some money if you want to go play Mr. Jacob DeGrom on this slate. Philadelphia at the Chicago Cubs. Aaron Nola against Jake Arietta. No total because of Wrigley Field. Nola's 10,000 on both sides. Arietta 79 and 76. Two pitchers that have not been quite as elite, but Nola still gets all the strikeouts at least. He gets all the strikeouts, but where they get off putting him at that much coming off a seven run game, he, you know, before that, he had a blank five and a third, no earn 12 strikeouts. Great game. The game before that six. So this is like playing minesweeper with him. Uh, I'm going to pass on both pitchers. There's just too many pitchers on this slate for Nola to be uh, in play at that price to me. So uh, I'll go with bats. There's some PVB day uh, data against Nola too. five for 12 for Rizzo with two homers. Three for 10 for Bryant with a bomb against Arietta. You have uh, JT Romuto, six for 16 with two doubles, a triple, and two homers. So five of his uh, six hits have gone for extra bases. Andrew McCutcheon has 56 at bats against Arietta, 13 for 56, uh, but a uh, homer and four doubles. So got some extra base hits in there. Uh, Wisdom has been hot. Sogard's been hitting. Uh, Harper, Bohm is starting to pick it up a little bit. Gene Segura as well. So uh, I'll stick to bats only in this game. Uh, Odubel had a big home run on um, on Monday, which is very surprising. But Bryce Harper swinging it very, very well. JT Ramuto, as you mentioned, Kutch. Uh, Phillies is the side I want for sure in this one because I always love attacking Jake Arrieta. Maybe like the Cubs have been so bad, but like this is the night probably if Nola is in a funk the way he is, no one's going to roster the Cubs. No one's going to yeah. roster him. Like, And the wind's still going to be blowing out 10 to 11 miles an hour, it looks like, to center field. So it's one of those nights – if you get a low on Cubs and Nola slips it up again, it's going to be easy pickings type thing. So if you want to do it, sure, just be ready for the disappointment that is the Chicago Cubs. That's all I'm going to say. But <laughs> like they're really good. It's a really good team that somehow just continues to disappoint. But I like the Philly side, especially Bryce Harper. Like he's one of my more favorite plays on this slate in that matchup versus area. They got Sogard throwing an inning here at the end. So oh, great. Um, <laughs> they actually earlier I saw beef on Twitter. I couldn't tell what it was, and then I looked. They pinch it so guard for Patrick Wisdom in the middle of that game. 
I think people are like, what are you doing, Ross? What are you doing, man? So, yeah, the Cubs are like, well, the about, fans are starting to revolt. It's fun. Did you see Rich Hill uh, leaving the game? Uh, yeah, early. It, oof, yikes. That well, was, he, couldn't, uh, he couldn't throw it out the sticky stuff for like four starts. Now he's out early. I we'll wish see. we could have heard what he was saying. I wonder how much the FCC would have fined him. Would have been a lot. <sighs> there needs to be like a like a Howard Stern station we can listen to. It just lets things lose because they don't care about the I FCC. I know. Come on. Great. Like, we I mean, got to wait for John Boy for, for all of them? Come on. Yeah, the problem is baseball, MLB doesn't like to like, let fans have fun. So we'll, be, we'll <laughs> never see it. It'll never see the light of day. So, um, yeah, next game on the slate, Chicago White Sox at the Minnesota Twins. Carlos Rodon, Jose Barrios over under eight and a half on this one. Rodon's 10-3 on DK, 10-6 on Fandle. Barrios 88 and, eight, and 99. Both really good pitchers. Both offenses are kind of hitting the ball right now. This is a nice GPP spot if you want to be contrarian on, on all four aspects of this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, Rodon always has a high K totals, uh, seven earned runs last two games, which is his highest earned runs in back-to-back games total, seven. So uh, he hasn't got beat up this year, but he's he's not pitching at this price either, kind of like Nola. You know, I, I would rather have Rodon, I think, over Nola, but uh, it's not by a ton. So I'm probably going to pass on the pitchers here and maybe take some hitters. Uh, Polanco is seven for 16 against Carlos Rodon with a double and a homer four for nine for Anderson, uh, Anderson Simmons with a bomb. Yon Moncada against Barrios is 10 for 31. That's a 323 average with three doubles and two homers. Uh, Jose Bray is 13 for 45 against him with two doubles and a bomb. So uh, nice PVB data here. And there's some, you know, hot hitting white Sox too. Vaughn grand doll, uh, I think he got banged up tonight too. He though. left injured again. He re-aggravated his calf injury. I'm, I'm thinking he's going the IL for a little bit. Yeah, he just should just you know Rest let him talk let him get right. Yeah. Right, uh, Lurie Garcia, Tim Anderson, and then uh, on Minnesota side, Larnick has been hitting, and he's cheaper on DK than he is on FanDuel, twenty five and three thousand. And karloff has been hitting too, thirty seven and three thousand. Kepler went th- uh, d- uh, deep twice tonight too, yeah. so uh, decent bats on both sides. And and affordable overall. Like Tim Anderson's expensive. Abreu's homeward in back to back games. He's pricey. Moncada's back. He had a decent game on Monday. So the big dogs are hitting, but you look at you got Vaughn, you got Sheets, you got Lurie Garcia with uh, Grandal out. You'll probably get um, uh, Collins, and he's going to be around 3K also on DK. So I mean, he's much cheaper on FanDuel. There's value on both sides of this one. So I have no problem going the value route and attacking this game. I have no problem using the pitchers. That's why this is like a total. If you watch ownership and want to be contrarian in a tournament, they all have some validity to them because Rodon and Barrios could deal or they can get lit up. It's a, a four, a true four outcome baseball game. So <laughs> it's like the perfect GPP kind of storm, depending on where you want to take your stance. Cincinnati at Kansas City on this one. This is I'm kind of looking forward to this one. Please don't let me down, Mr. Luis Castillo. Luis Castillo versus Chris Bubik. Uh, Castillo, 85 on both sides. Bubik, 56 on DK. Waiting for him on FanDuel. I'm going to keep going with Castillo. I've been banging this drum for over a month now, and uh, I know he still walks guys, but he's always walked guys. But I mean, things, four, are things are better. Four quality starts in a row. He's got to be in play. So uh, I'm absolutely with you. Uh, Castillo's in here, which makes me off of Kansas City bats. Uh, so if there's bats that I like here, it's Castellanos. Uh, Votto's been hot. Jonathan India's been hitting as well. So I think that's what I go with Castillo and maybe one of the hitters. Yeah, keep an eye on India. He got scratched right before the start of the game. Hopefully, it's just like a, he had the poops or something. But, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen any reports yet, so I'm just going to speculate he went full Lamar Jackson on the situation. <laughs> no idea. But Castellanos went deep. I love Votto in games like this because people see lefty-lefty and don't go there. Bubik isn't long for this game, people, so don't care about the lefty-lefty. Like If you want to go Winker even or something or, or, or Naquin or whatever, I think the Reds are a very, very strong play in this game versus Bubik and company. So keep them on your radar. Oakland at Houston. I actually want to sit down and just watch this game. It's going to yeah. be a fun one. You got Chris Bassett versus Framber Valdez over under eight and a half. Bassett's 9,800, 10,000, and he just got snubbed from the All-Star game. Valdez is 95 on DK, 10-2 on FanDuel. They both pitched outstanding all year. They're both in play for me tonight, Vogman, and I just want to watch this guy. I, this, I'm praying it's the pitcher's duel it should be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can. it's hard to... It's hard to say don't buy Astros bats because they've been, like you said, they're the Kansas City Chiefs of baseball. You know, mm-hmm. the offense has just been incredible for them. But Valdez, six out of his seven are quality, three quality starts in a row for Bassett. And, you know, he's ticked off after getting snubbed, like you said. 
So I'm with you. I think I'm going to go either one of these pitchers and probably not many bats. If you want to go contrarian and take some bats, I don't even know if it'll be contrarian, to be honest with you. But if you want bats, uh, Correa, four for 11, uh, a little PVB data against Bassett. Guriel, eight for 21 with two doubles, uh, eight for 25 for Brantley. No homers against him, though. Either, uh, either of those guys, straws, three for eight against him, no bombs. Uh, Pender, five, uh, two for five against Valdez, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to go pitchers and no hitters here. Yeah, I think Bassett will probably come in lower owned just because people do still flock to Houston because they're Houston, so that'll be nice. I think Valdez will come in a little higher owned because the, the A's have been slumping, so if you are going to go any contrarian angle, it's like Sean Murphy, um, Loreano, some of these A's bats, Mark uh, Chapman, I just don't think I'm going to pay for that. So I just want both pitchers in this game. But that would be like Oakland bats because Valdez, as much as I love him and he limits hard contact, he's had walk issues this last couple starts. And that it just takes a couple walks and a home run and boom goes everything. So <laughs> um, just it's interesting. I, I hope it doesn't. I love Framber. I have a ton of season long leagues. So please, please, God, keep going. But <laughs> yeah, should be a fun one to watch. Boston at Los Angeles, Angels of Anaheim, Nate Eovaldi, show hey Otani. Over under a nine on this one. Eovaldi 89 on DK, 10 3 on Fandle. Otani 83 on DK. Fandle still sleeping at the wheel. Um, Eovaldi they had him all-star. Priced at, as, a, as a hitter earlier. Yeah, so they're today. definitely, definitely asleep yeah. at the wheel. Definitely it was like 4,600. I was like, what? And, the, and I was like, oh, it's a position player. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So drunk, drunk. But Otani, <laughs> Otani's coming off a tough one against the Yanks. Are you going back to him against Boston? I think you can. Yeah. He's, a, he's I, an ace I, at 8300 bucks. <laughs> right, right. 8300 I think at that price, I can get back invested. I mean, I, you know, I'll have at least one shot at him because, you know, the strikeout upside is obviously enormous. So I think I'll give him a shot. Uh, Eovaldi has been decent lately, too. He's a little pricey for me. I don't want to pay up for him that much. Uh, but, I mean... You know, the uh, the bats haven't been super hot for uh, the Angels here either. Um, there's a little PVB data against the Evaldi. Six for 12 for Goslin with a double. So hitting 500 against him. Eight for 29 for Rendon with two doubles. Uh, but there are hot hitters on both sides here. J.D. Martinez, Kike, Renfro, obviously. Devers has been nice too. All of these Boston bats are expensive. Dahlback might be cheap. Uh, 26 and 29, actually more expensive on FanDuel. Um, Iglesias, Walsh, Stassi on the Angels side, but you know Walsh obviously the best option there, and he's super expensive. So I think uh, Otani, maybe uh, some Red Sox bats in another lineup, but not too much from this game. Yeah, it's like we say with Otani all the time. It was like the biggest risk reward pitcher you can have when he's on. He's like an elite ace. When he's off, we saw what happened. Like that's what happened to Otani because he walks a lot of guys. That's what he did in that game. He walked like two, th- two or three guys, gave up a bunch of hits after, and just it just implodes real quickly. So he's great. I will use him in tournaments, but that's where the playing Boston bats. If you want, it'll come into play. Like Devers and company, they're expensive, but they'll have upside if something slips up because Anaheim's bullpen sucks too. I do like I do like Evaldi as, as a pitcher on DK. Not on Fanduel. I'm not paying ten three, but on DK at eighty nine, I definitely will. And the last thing I'll say for those that like sit there and blah 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 blah, blah I will never play Otani at pitcher. Blah blah blah, all this stuff. If you're willing to pay ten thousand dollars for Aaron Nola, you better pay eighty three hundred dollars for Otani. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. Otani's on. He is equal to Nola, if not better. So just rock with that one, please. Four more games to go before I go there. Make sure you give a rate and review on iTunes. We truly appreciate it. It helps the podcast out quite a bit. helps uh, more people experience the Bogman and Bubba experience. And you know, <laughs> it might not be for everybody, but it's for a lot of people. So come join the party there and go to the uh, Lion Star YouTube channel and uh, subscribe, give the thumbs up, and all the good stuff there as well. All right, Colorado at Arizona. We got John Gray versus Merrill Kelly over under eight and a half. Gray 73 on DK, 83 on Fandle. Kelly 92 and 88. Both are pitching very, very well right now, Bogman. Yeah, I mean, Gray, uh, three starts versus Arizona this year. He's got 18 and two-thirds innings, eight earned runs, which is a 3.86 ERA. Uh, only 11 strikeouts to seven walks, but he's been good against Arizona. Merrill Kelly has three quality starts in a row, and in those three, uh, 17 to one strikeout to a walk ratio. So pretty good for him. He has one good and one bad start against Colorado. They were both 
before their like his last one was his bad one and his last one was May 3rd. So it's been a while. Uh, but there's some PVB data for the Diamondbacks against Gray. Uh, three for six for Cabrera against him, three for 10 for Pavin, 15 of 35. I mean, Peralta owns him. Two triples hitting 429, six for 15 for Walker, uh, five for 17 for Nick Ahmed. And then Josh Reddick has been hitting too. Diamondbacks have been hitting, if anything, recently. Uh, Diaz went yard, I think, uh, on Sunday. Might have been today too. Uh, 4,300, 3,100 for Colorado. Story's been hitting. Hampson and McMahon also can always be in play. So uh, Kelly as a maybe. Uh, I don't want to mess with John Gray. I just think the Diamondbacks have a decent track record against him overall. So I don't want to mess with him. There's a couple of very nice tournament angles here because Kelly, I do like tonight. Most people will not even come close to playing 92 for him. Like, it's just not going to yeah. happen. On FanDuel at 88, makes for a very nice value tournament play there. But on DK at 92, I'm still not against it just because no one's going to play him. And if he throws another 20 plus points up there, you're going to be way ahead of the field. On the same angle, everyone's going to play John Gray at 73 dollars. Right. I think he's a great play. But you mentioned the D backs bats are heating up. I just watched him play a whole series against the Giants, and the Giants pitchers are not great, but they're not a joke either. The D backs are starting to hit the baseball, and they're all very cheap. They remind me a lot of a, the way I liked Cleveland on Monday, that no one's going to roster them because they're not really a good team. Same with Arizona. They could shock you and score six-plus runs at a super value, help you get Jacob DeGrom, help you get some more expensive bats. I think Arizona's that team for you on Tuesday night. St. Louis at San Francisco on this one. Adam Wainwright, Johnny Cueto, over-under of eight. I will say the wind's blowing out like 15 miles an hour, supposedly, on this one. And that ballpark's playing livelier than it used to be. So I'm just going to pencil that in now. Wayno's 81 at DK, 82 on Fandle, Cueto 77 and 89. What do you got here? Well, I like Wainwright, uh, even with the wind blown out, because like you mentioned before, the Giants are not hitting recently. So uh, he's got six quality starts in a row. I think he's got to be in play. Uh, my note for Cueto is let Bubba talk me into it. Yeah, not tonight. Like, okay. Right. Which means which means he probably deals because St. Louis bats aren't good. <laughs> like, St. Louis isn't good. They scored two runs on a couple of bloops, and then in, they scored their third run on another bloop, like three straight bloop singles with two outs. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're not good, but I'm not going to play Johnny Cueto. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. I mean, it's probably Wainwright and bats here, and like you said, there's not a lot of hot bats for St. Louis right now. I mean, Edmund and Goldie are expensive. Uh, Bader at 32 and 3000 isn't a bad cheap one if you're looking for a cheap bat. But there's a PVB data against Wainwright here. Your boy Buster, seven for 20, all star starter Buster. Uh, uh, he's uh, seven for 20 uh, with the double. Flor uh, Flores, two for six, 14 uh, of 48 against Cueto for uh, Yadier Molina because he's played for a million years. But two doubles, a triple, and two homers, so five extra base hits against him. Uh, he's expensive on both, though, 45 and 36. So, uh, But, yeah, I, I think it's mainly Wainwright and maybe Bader for a cheap option. Yeah, I don't mind uh, Wainwright at all. If you want to use him, you can. If you want some value giants, go there, too. Wade's not a value as much anymore. Still, I like him. Uh, Duggar's a value, stuff along those lines for the Giants. But, yeah, not a ton I like in this game. I'll probably pass, which is going to sting. But uh, there's two more games to talk about on this wonderful slate. And one is the New York Yankees traveling west to face the Seattle Mariners. We've got Jameson Tyon, Justice Sheffield, over under of nine. Tyon 72 and 71. Sheffield 68 and 61. I love me some bats, Bogman. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm absolutely with you as far as bats go. My note right here is nope and nope for Tyon and Sheffield. Uh, but these bats haven't been hot for either team either. I mean, Urshela, 41 and 28 has been nice for uh, the Yankees. I, if you want to throw Judge or Stanton out there, uh, I'm all about it. 54, 38 for Judge, 48, 37 for Stanton. So maybe Stanton just because he's cheaper. But uh, Fraley's been hitting a little bit for Seattle. J.P. Crawford still has and Ty France is picking it back up at 32 and 28. But uh, I want to stack these games, but it doesn't seem to be very stackable. Yeah, it's not as like great as it once was. But another option I like is uh, Luke Voigt, 42 on DK, 28 on Fandle. That's one that's I wouldn't good good mind one. going to against Justice Sheffield. That's some fun there. So, so Fandle always has the Yankees as a much better value. So <laughs> that's a great place to go to it if you want to. I don't hate Seattle like each other. Very frustrating. Like JP, JP Crawford, Fraley, um, see what else they throw out there. Mix and match. You can have some fun with it. But they're, they're, this game should pop off 
We'll see. Last game of the evening, Washington Nationals at San Diego Padres. We wanted it as a late night hammer on Monday. It is. It's five to three in the uh, the third inning right now. So it's got. It's going to be the hammer we wanted. It's happening again on uh, on Tuesday night because Patrick Corbin's taking the mound versus Ryan Weathers and the bullpen. So um, you don't have to like Washington bats, but <laughs> I love San Diego again. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to stack either side of this game, I'm probably more on the San Diego side. I mean. Uh, Will Myers, 10 of 29 against Corbin with four doubles and a bomb, 345. You know, a lot of uh, D-backs games against Corbin for sure. Machado's three for 11 with a bomb against him, and Machado's hot. So Tatis, Profar, Hosmer, uh, any of these guys. And then on the Washington side, like you said, I mean, Soto's expensive, but 5036 is actually one of his better prices. Uh, Starling Castro, Josh Bell, uh, Josh Harrison at 26 and 24 is a good buy, too. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with going with bats and no pitchers here at all. Yep, yep. Go Padres. Go Padres. Keep pounding. Pounding uh, Corbin there, Machado and company. I love Fam, Myers. They're all, yeah, just play them all. Even Cronenworth. I said it last night on Monday's show. I said, play him against the lefty because no one else will. First at bat, single stolen base. I believe he got on his second time and scored a run. He's an all-star, folks. Rake Cronenworth. Enjoy. Uh, real quick recap before we head on out of here, Boggs. Who are your top pitchers on this slate? Uh, the pit, I mean, DeGrom is obviously one. Doesn't matter his price. Bassett, Valdez, I, I like those guys. Probably Luis Castillo after that group. And then if you want to pick out of Otani, Anderson, Wainwright, Pablo Lopez, Merrill Kelly, I'm, I'm good with all those guys. Yeah, we're pretty much on the same page. The only other guys, like, I don't mind Eovaldi on DK. Um, but once again, similar to Monday night, not a lot of discounts. I like on DK, especially where I mainly play. So that's where I focus my talk a lot. I really don't want to go below Wainwright. And usually I have a bunch of cheap guys I like. Maybe lineups come out and I'll change things because we saw some wanky lineups on Monday already. So maybe we get some goofy ones on Tuesday that makes you go, oh, I could kind of justify this a little bit. We'll see. So uh, that'll be something to keep an eye on. What stacks are you like in tonight? Because there's a lot to choose from. Yeah, I mean, uh, Toronto, Baltimore, either side. Detroit, Texas, either side. Uh, Philly against the Cubs. Cincinnati against Bubich. Uh, the Yankees and Mariners, either side. And uh, the Padres and Nationals, uh, I think, either side as well. So uh, it's not. I don't think there's a lot of games with stacks. But there's a lot of teams with stacks that are playing each other. Yeah, I like all of those. And the other one I'll throw in there is Arizona. I think that could be your sneakier one on this slate, which is I know Bogman won't know because he won't watch it, but I'll report it to him when we record <laughs> tomorrow night. Uh, I speaking get of the updates on uh, Twitter. Speaking cool. of reporting, we got to report Javi Baez went deep. So that's good on Monday, but that means we have home run calls of the day coming up. So follow Line Star on Twitter at Line Star app and at Line Star MLB. Bogman, myself, and Ryan Humphreys will give you a home run call of the day. And if one of ours hits and you retweet it, you get you get chosen then uh, you win some free swags. So uh, follow them on Twitter. Retweet the home run call of the day. So Bogman, Tuesday, July 6th, who's your home run call of the day? Give me George Springer against uh, Kramer or whoever Baltimore throws out there tomorrow. So uh, that that's going to be my pick. Give me a Blue Jake, George Springer. I do not hate that at all. I'm going to go, some may say chalk in this one, but I'm going to ride this guy while he's hot, 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 and do not use any, no one clip that, please. But give me <laughs> uh, give me Mr. Joseph, Sir Joseph Gallo in this one uh, off of Urania and company. So you I got pivoted to- off of Gallo because I knew you were going to take him. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, called him sir and everything. I guess I'll find somebody else. So. Yeah. I appreciate that. Nice friend, nice friend you are. Uh, so Bogman has George Springer. I have Joseph Gallo. We'll see who Ryan Humphreys picks. There's going to be a lot of home runs. A lot. Not just because there's 14 games, just because it's such bad pitching. There's going to be so <laughs> much offense. So enjoy it, everybody. I'm on Twitter at BDNTrick. Bogman at Bogman Sports. Fun Tuesday night slate. We'll be back with you guys on Wednesday to break it all down for you once again. Good luck, everybody. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Line Star app on deck podcast. Download Line Star app from the App Store or go to linestarapp.com for all your DFS baseball needs. If you love the on deck podcast, support KC Bubba and Bogman by rating and subscribing. Good luck.